Joining me now, Berkeley Veritronics president and CEO, cybersecurity expert Scott Schober. Scott, a lot in the hopper there. Which of these plans do you like the most? They're all actually good because they're actually doing something, and I think that's what's really important. There's been a lot of talk in the past. Uh, it's nice to see the Biden administration seems to be actually um, taking some initiative. I did check out the website there, the, the Stop Ransomware, and there was actually some pretty good information on there, practical information, and it's really geared toward the public, which I think is interesting. So public companies, small business owners, others that really need help, and, and need to understand what a ransomware attack is, what are some preventative things that they could do so they could be proactive. And if they are a victim, what's the most important thing to do? And there's actually resources there, your local uh, offices, mm -hmm. the FBI, the Secret Service, all the links and the information, who to contact and what to report to them so they can work together both private and public together to, to stop some of these terrible ransomware yeah, attacks. Yeah, I guess that's the next question. How effective do you think that will be? I mean, it's sort of a first line of defense that some of these small companies don't have right now? Yeah, right now, a lot of people are just, I don't want to say it, but they're kind of clueless. They respond after the fact. They're not putting in practice best practices. They're not backing up their data, which all cybersecurity practitioners recommend on a regular basis. So if you are a victim of ransomware, you have something to fall back to, mm -hmm. and you don't basically have to negotiate with terrorists. And the part of the problem is ransomware is getting worse. There's now reported 4,000 plus ransomware cases every single day in the U.S. That's really bad. Well, it certainly is. Money talks, uh, as we know, yeah. Scott. So th this new uh, idea to have this fund to pay people, maybe even you know, on the dark web, right, to, to sort of counter these hackers and help the U.S. find them. Yeah, and, and that's brilliant. Why? Think how big tech companies work right now. They're, they have vulnerabilities within their software. And what do they have? They have a bug bounty program, which handsomely rewards hackers, usually white hack hackers that are honest guys that are finding these vulnerabilities and they share it with the company so they can make software more secure. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of principle, but a little bit different light. This is, hey, let, let some good guys go find the bad guys on the dark web and on social media and other things and report it so we could work together, private and public, and we could stop some of these attacks before they actually come to fruition. We hear most of these based in Russia, Scott. Uh, which is the bigger threat, Russia or China on this? Russia and China are a big threat. In my opinion, if I had to vote, I'd say Russia's probably the number one. There's more Russian cyber criminal gangs that they pointed to. You, you look at the Colonial Pipeline, th that was a Russian cyber criminal gang, Dark Shadow. You look at the most recent ones, uh, JBS Meatpacking, uh, that certainly, again, pointed That's to the Russia. That's evil, evil right? Yeah, yeah which has now gone dark. What do you think's happened with that? Yeah, and that's very interesting. I think what happened is the Biden administration has put so much pressure on Putin and his administration that they may have said, hey, guys, we got to calm down here. We're going to get nailed and, mm -hmm. and maybe pulled the plug and said, uh, let's lie low for a little bit. But it's been pulled off uh, off the dark web, which is very interesting. All these different sites 